Well, good day and welcome and thank you for joining me today. Today's video is going to be a compliment to my last video where I go over a bunch of the things that are plaguing the world today, the things that are overwhelming our minds, whether we realized it or not. And we stop to think about how many things we're being bombarded with that are causing us stress, anxieties, fear, confusion, all that stuff. And so when you get to the end of that video, which I will admit a lot of people don't fully get to the end, but I do explain some of the things that I think will be a good solution in these cases, and that is preparedness. Preparedness on two fronts. One, preparedness for your home, your 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 food, your pantry, and other gear items that you might need in case the uh and the apocalypse comes. And then the other aspect was on the mindfulness preparation so that you are mentally prepared on how to focus your energy in order to get through these tough times in a way that will bring happiness, positive and focus to do the right things, the right choices in life so that you can survive and get through it without going crazy yourself. So in this video, we're going to talk about the homestead and the preparedness that you can do here in the way of food so that you don't have to leave your home in case something were to happen that you are prepared here. Now I'm gonna show you how to do all of this with a very minimal amount of money. You can get through this. You can sustain yourself for over a month or two and your family with a very low cost with the things that I'm going to consider today. So my preparedness, began years ago with a co-worker who was also a friend. He is a prepper and a big prepper at that. Right now, he can sustain himself for three years, not just with food, but with other, other preparedness items. And um, when he was going through his journey and building up to that, we had these conversations on a daily basis, and he would always ask me how prepared I was. So as we had these discussions, I realized that I was not prepared at all, and that I was also not in a financial situation where I can start to really build up, at least I thought at the time. I, you know, at the time, I convinced myself that I wasn't financially prepared. Again, I'm gonna give you some tips today where I've discovered I was wrong at the time, but my journey began with this, these conversations and realizing that, well, instead of preparing in the pantry area that I was going to prepare here. And so I went on to the survival skills, learning primitive tactics on how to survive in the wilderness, you know, building shelters, building tools out of rocks and sticks, getting cordage, uh, hunting, uh, tactics and even making clothing and leather bands and things like that. So that was an inspiring journey of mine that has really changed who I am. However, that journey showed me just how much that you really have to go through the grind. You have to go through the challenges and failures just to become a little bit more resilient in order to really tackle the situation because it's no longer just a fantasy. When you're putting in a situation where you need to survive, things can go wrong really fast. And when they do, it's not a gradual decline. It kind of goes and then bam, the suck happens and you are in a critical situation of survivalness and you can't fend for yourself or even for your loved ones. And so the reality is, is that there is more to prepping than what you realize. All right, so now the part that we're here for, and I'm going to show you some of the tricks that you can do right now, things for you to consider, that is at low cost, that will sustain you for weeks on end, if not months, for you and your family. And uh, I did the hard work, and I'm going to explain to you uh, what you need to consider here. So 1,000 calories is all someone needs to sustain themselves for the day without getting sick or ill uh, if they were standing or sitting and doing absolutely nothing in their day for whatever reason. Maybe you're sick, you're ill, uh, you have an injury, you're tired, or you're spending your day doing just meditation, getting by, right? Doing nothing all day, 1,000 calories. Now, if you're going to do some moderate things, which is what the majority of people are going to do, 
You know, that could be just uh, cooking, cleaning, walking around a little bit, doing the odd items all around. 15,000, 1,500 calories is all you need, okay? And then if you're going to be doing some vigorous work, which is what you're going to end up doing when the crisis begins, you're going to end up exerting yourself with of energy by preparing yourself for the immediate actions that you need to take. You're going to need at least 2,000 calories, more than that. But again, 2,000 calories is the number that I want you to keep in your head for getting through the day without depleting yourself too much so that you can sustain yourself as the days go by and you can continue to prepare and take care of your situation. This is a 10 pound bag of flour and this will go a very long way. It costs about 20 bucks. Uh, it goes on sale every once in a while. So if you can get it on sale, snag it when you can. That one bag has enough calories in there for 24 days for one person. The counts of calories that I'm presenting to you is at 1,500 calories a day, okay? So that is the, the average that a person's gonna need throughout their days, okay? So it has 36,666 calories in that bag. Again, taking one person 24 days. If you have a family, you may have to double that. You may have to triple that in your in your calculation. So if I divide that by three, you know, I'm looking at about eight days worth of food. But eight days is a week. That one bag can get me and my family through one week. So obviously you're going to want to have some things to go along with that so that you're not just mixing water with flour. You're going to want to consider some of the following. Consider yeast, right? You're going to need a couple of packets of yeast to get you through. So now you can make some bread. Well, with the bread, you're going to want to have some salt. So you're going to want a, a bunch of packs of salt to go along with that. Now you can start making bread. And if you have sugar, you can start to make a few dessert items, perhaps. Okay. So the next thing in the way of carbs, um, is rice now this this is a 17 pound bag of rice keep that in there keep it secured from any mice want to come in one bag of rice is 28,800 calories and that is good for one person for 19 days so between the flour and the rice, I'm already prepared for over a month. So consider that right there. Those two items, you're good to go for one month. Now you're going to want to flavor this because it's obviously going to be bland and boring. But if you had to survive on that, just saying, you got it. You got yourself covered and you can feel good that you got you and your family covered. Okay. So obviously some of the things you're going to want to have on hand to flavor that are things like, you know, obviously soy sauce, uh, maybe some teriyaki, honey, garlic, all these flavors that we, we associate with rice, but you can also have crust or canned tomatoes are good to go into, to that kind of a mix. And also one of the things that I like to do is these ramen noodles that I have, my son doesn't like it with the flavor in there. So then what I do is I have, these bags that I just put those flavors in, these flavors can go into that rice or into any other dish that you have. On the subject of carbs, right? We wanna make sure that we have some form of vegetable and some nutrients, okay? So uh, potatoes, which, you know, a, a sack of potatoes will go bad and will spoil after a while, but having a a can of potatoes, or my my favorites are these packages of potatoes. It's as you add some water, they're just potato flakes. You add some water, and you got some mashed potatoes. Uh, a source of fat is also very important in all of this. So consider getting yourself 
some form of oil, all right? So whether, whether it be canola oil, vegetable oil, olive oil, whatever oil. So in this one jug of oil here, I have an incredible amount of um, calories. We are looking at 28,400 calories in this jug right here. That is enough to last 19 days. So you're not going to drink it, obviously, but you can mix it in on your pan when you're cooking your food. You can fry your food in it. But that is a huge amount of calories. And the price on these are going up. And I don't like it. But if you can find yourself a deal, snag one of these. Another thing that I find is really awesome in the way of carbs is this. Check this out. This big thing of popcorn has 14,400 calories. That will last you 10 days. That's 10 days at 1,500 calories. So now we're going to talk about the protein. You're going to need that. If you have a freezer or a fridge, uh, you can keep your meat in there for a good while. Considering your fridge is down, all right, your freezer is down, other ways to get your protein are peanut butter or Nutella, okay? Peanut butter or Nutella. This one thing of peanut butter has 12,000 calories. That's good enough for one person for eight days. You can take this and you can put it in with your bread that you make, make the bread a little bit more tastier, you know, or you can just spoon feed yourself. Now, another protein is these protein shakes, okay, or pro whey protein. That's a great way to get your protein is by making yourself a smoothie. However, you may say, well, if you mix it in with, say, yogurt or milk, that's going to go bad soon. You're not going to have it. It's not going to sustain itself. It's going to go bad within the next couple of weeks. So consider having yourself these bags of milk, dried milk. Okay, powdered milk. This one bag, you turn it into milk, it goes good in your uh, shake, it goes in with your pancakes, you can mix it in with whatever, and you're also getting some of these other uh, important nutrients that you would get from your milk. Another thing to consider is canned meat. Okay, so we know that it's going to be okay for over a year in the can. It's protected. It won't go bad. So if you're, again, your freezer is down or something like that, you have a way to get some meat. I will highly recommend getting the things that make you happy. All right. We all know that things like coffee, or tea is something that most of us feel like we really want in our lives. So stock up on that. Now, lastly, but most importantly, probably is water. You need to have some form of water in you. You can only go three days without water. So make sure you have stocked up enough water or know where to get some. You know, um, if you don't, if you don't have one of these big tubs, then you know, you're going to need some bottled water. You're going to need two of these for sure as a minimum per person uh, a day. So I hope that was helpful. Along with this video, I'm going to be doing a mindfulness preparedness um, video to complement this one here to talk about the two things that I mentioned before and being prepared in the ways of survivability and uh, mental preparedness. So, uh, Ha, watch that if you haven't already. You can go 21 days without food. So being prepared isn't just having 21 days worth of food. It's actually having twice as much of that in case the rest of the world is starving and they're going through their crisis. You, you're going to need to be able to be prepared to last through their crisis of 21 days and then go beyond that for yourself something for you to really consider all right so until next time
enjoy life. Take care, and I wish you well.